Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. Well, isn't life just a funny thing? One day, you're driving your Rolls Royce up to your store, and the next day, <laughs> you're driving this. I had a um, little bit of bad luck. My old Ford truck that I've been driving lately uh, had a small electrical fire. Nothing major. It was a uh, wire to an aftermarket thing, but it did knock out my uh, windshield washer pump and my signal lights are acting up. So I've taken it into the shop to get that fixed. In the meantime, they've given me the loaner. <laughs> like your stereotypical loaner car um it's fine i'm actually i'm appreciative i'm fine i'm happy driving it here but this isn't the uh <laughs> this isn't the showpiece that some of you have come to expect from me but hey it's getting me around just fine uh but enough about that <laughs> i always feel like they intentionally give you the like sure you want to borrow a car you can borrow this one it's it's three or four different cars all put together <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was making that up. Uh, anyway, I ended up going out of pick last night and I ended up buying a whole bunch of stuff. Some of it really cool. Um, and I have to open in a couple hours. So we're going to get inside, go through some boxes. We'll do a little unboxing episode today and see exactly what I bought because um, I haven't gone through everything just yet. So we'll do a little exploration. Come along with me, see what the heck's in the store. Now, generally speaking, my store is pretty full, but kind of laid out, you know, there's decorations and decor and stuff, but I don't like having piles of stuff on my counters. That's why I've got to go through all these boxes and get this sorted before we open up. So um, I'm going to come back to this box in a minute and we'll go through it. I'm going to start over on this side with this lamp. So at some point back in the 1950s, um, actually a major in the U.S. Air Force, who also like to build other stuff, <laughs> took this violin and decided it should become a lamp. Now, the sad part is it's actually a late 1700s violin that he's done this to. It's not like he took a violin from the time from the 50s. He actually took an antique violin and turned it into a lamp. So unfortunately, it's uh, you know somewhat devalued <laughs> because of that. But if I look inside very carefully, I'll see if I can get the light on in there. I don't know if you can see. Let's see if we can find the paper. There's always paper labels inside if you look closely. There's one in there. Uh, one of them is dated, oh boy, hard to focus on that. It looks like in 1869. It's always kind of a shame when a cool historic piece like that ends up becoming a lamp. Now, I'm sure somebody could probably take it in and get those spots mended. But um, I will likely just sell it as it is, as a violin lamp. Um, so that's item number one. Cool piece of history. Damaged, but probably repairable. But um, I'm not going to I'm not gonna trouble myself with it too much right now. We'll leave it over there. But what I'm going to have to do is I have to get these boxes sorted and sifted and gone through because uh, they don't belong on my countertop. Okay, first one I guess we'll look at will be this. This is a uh, kind of a neat piece on its own. This is a 1930s Snap-on toolkit. You can see Snap-on kind of written right there. It's been painted obviously over the years, but it's kind of built like a uh, like an old school tackle box where, look at that, you push down on the handle. Kind of ingenious. When you pull up on it, it closes. When you push it down, the thing opens up. Really, really neat idea. Good idea for a toolbox. Good old Snap-on. Uh, good quality stuff, and Snap-on is collectible. There are collectors out there for this stuff, so toolbox itself is 
pretty darn cool. But let's have a look and see what's inside. Auburn rubber, I believe that's Auburn. Arker toys, no, it looks like an Auburn toy, but it's uh, that heavy sort of rubber, that really thick rubber that they were making uh, toys out of it back in the 40s. There's a couple of those. Actually, this is a Tootsie toy truck. Got all its wheels and everything. And another little Tootsie toy race car, like a little midget racer. And there's a whole bunch of lighters. These are all, looks like there's some Zippos in here. Now, there are things you have to look for with a Zippo. One easy way to tell on a Zippo lighter is the way that Zippo is written. The top one with sort of the swoop on the top of the Z, or Z, depending upon how you like to say that letter, is from about 1955 to 80 something or other. Anyway, the one on the bottom with the more refined Z that turns into a flame, that is a little bit more modern and newer. They use that from the 1980s up. So any of the ones I have like that are potentially a little bit older. And then some will have a date code stamped. If they're not stamped on the bottom, sometimes they're stamped on the inside. I would say most of these lighters I have are probably from the 70s or 80s. And they're pretty simple, some, you know, with uh, initials on them and stuff. So there's nothing really super great. The ones with advertising are a little bit more interesting when you find a lighter. A simple lighter is, well, just a good lighter. Little guy here that looks like it's from maybe an Air Force Base. Uh, what does it say on it? I think what it says is Hot Springs, Arkansas, where the world bathes. <laughs> and there's a tiny little lighter, I guess, what to take in the hot tub with you. Hey, ladies, check out my tiny little lighter. <laughs> I don't know why you'd be showing off your lighter, but apparently uh, that's what they gave you if you went to uh, the Hot Springs in Arkansas. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, this is also a lighter, oddly. This is a Coca-Cola promotional. I believe it's a lighter. Oh, maybe not. Hang on, I'm going to have a closer look at it. Oh, it totally is a lighter. Look, the bottom comes off. There it is. I don't... Yeah, the, oh, still has some spark. Put some fluid in that, and that thing is going to work. Coca-Cola would give these out sort of as promotional items at the bottling plants usually. It's a neat piece. It looks like it has Coke inside of it. It's kind of uh, transparent. It's a nice little collectible item. A few more Zippos. That's the smaller size. So a good selection of Zippos. There's a pen. CHXL with a microphone on it. So it's a radio station promotional pen. That's pretty cool for pen collector or a radio collector. It's nice to have crossover pieces like that because you get people who are interested in both. It's a little tie clip, the 1940s or 50s kind of tie clip, and it's a, of an airplane. That's pretty nifty. I don't, I think that's probably gold filled. I don't see any stampings on there saying that's actual gold. It would be nice if it was. It's cool either way though, isn't it? If you were a pilot, you could wear that as your tie clip. I think that's pretty neat. Or if you just like airplanes. This, however, is gold. Can't see the stamp on it. There it is. 10 carat. Little gold ring. And some old coins. We have uh, 1883 Morgan dollar. US Morgan dollar. That's a good chunk of silver. It's not in a very good shape at all. It's got, in fact, like a little indentation in it. But that's a good old dollar coin. In fact, all these coins look like they've got some age to them. One cent. United States of America. That's a really old American penny. 1850. That's what a U.S. 1850 penny looked like. You can tell it's old. It has kind of an imperfection in the casting. It's not perfectly round. And I don't think that's just because of age. I just don't think the stampings were 100%. Well, that is an oldie. That's pretty cool. We've got a 1882 Canadian 25 cent piece with a young Queen Victoria on it. The Queens always have a ponytail when they're younger and then later in life they've got the different kind of hairdos, but yeah, young Queen Victoria. This is a neat piece here. Not in the greatest shape, but I believe this is from, uh, it's a half penny 
I think this is an Upper Canada piece. Bank of Upper Canada. That's when Canada was only basically Upper and Lower Canada, the East Coast, before we were actually a, you know, a larger country. That is quite old. I have to clean that up, but that would date from the 1800s for sure. We didn't become a, the country of Canada until 1867, so anything prior to that is we're more or less a colony. 1855, let's see, a couple more coins in here. 1911 Canadian penny, King George on it. And a 1933 Canadian penny. That one's actually not in bad shape. There is a, a penny from 1936 that looks like this, and it has a little dot right in the middle. If you have that one, it's like a, a million bucks. There's only three of them known to exist, so I always have to take a good look at these pennies when they come through. And U.S. military collar pin. And that's about it, just some more lighters in here. Well, it's still neat, and the toolbox is cool to boot. Now on to box number two. I can tell by the time I am done emptying out this box, I'll have all my ducks in a row. And you can kind of tell whether some of these are newer or older based on their construction. These were practical pieces used for hunting. Um, that one has AK carved on the bottom. A lot of times they would also weigh them down. So if you look at the base of some, this one's been stripped. I think it actually is old. Yeah, it is old. It's got the lead weight in it. I think somebody tried refinishing it and they took all the, uh, the paint off of it, which is kind of a shame because it is an antique duck. This one still has, it's been painted probably a few times, glass eyes. Would have had a uh, big sort of um, lead weight on the bottom to keep it from uh, tipping over because you can't attract too many ducks when you do a duck call and they look down and see a bunch of dead ducks lying in the water. They'd be like, nope, <laughs> you want them floating around so it looks like there's other ducks down there. Um, so hunting tool, folk art, um, beautiful craftsmanship. The carving on these is really cool. Really unique. Every artist did their bills a little different, the eyes different. So there are many collectors of um, duck decoys, and uh, it's nice. Well, that one's missing his head. Maybe it's in the box. I'm going to reach down in the box. Ah, look, there it is. So we have uh, at least four nice antique duck decoy decoys right off the bat those are very cool and these can range in value um from like you know 50 to 100 bucks up to thousands of dollars if it's the right artist that did it or the right person that did it um i'll have to check and see you can see how this one that's actually been stripped down has a really nice symmetrical sort of body on it with a really nice shape to it um this might have been the same artist that did both of those it looks like they had sort of a style that they like to use and it looks like they did the bill very similar Hard to say though, without having a time machine or many names stamped on, other than that one has AK carved on the bottom. Those are pretty cool. Let's see, we've got a big book. What is the book? Virginia Military Institute. Withdrawn from library. And it looks like it was in use in 1952. Courier and Ives America, edited by Colin. A panoramic of 19th century scenes. But these would be likely um, prints. Courier and Ives prints. Or plates. Yep, that's what it is. These lovely sort of plates that you see in antique stores all over the place. These lithographs. And uh, you oftentimes see them framed and people are selling them just individually. Um, There's a whole book full of them. So this is pretty darn cool. I mean, each one of these plates has some value. You can see they're, they're coming loose. I didn't pull that out, nor would I want to have pulled it out, but it is coming loose from the binding, so I have to be careful. But these are great lithographs, great scenes. It's nice that it's uh, the book as it is, with all these wonderful sort of winter scenes and sled races and you know just an early snapshot of what america was like in the early days 
about what was going on. Apparently you have your horses inside. Oh, I thought that was inside a house. <laughs> Silly me, those are the stables. It said uh, trotting cracks at home, but the stables are so nice, it looks like the inside of a house. I'm sure there's somebody out there who's probably had a horse inside their house. My mother-in-law has had, I think she had a, a sheep at the farm that got sick and they had to bring it inside once. See, I bet they caught these ducks with decoys. Anyway, really cool book. Lots of great images. I could get lost just staring at pictures. Castle Garden, New York. Well, that is, that's kind of neat because that's where my family uh, immigrated into uh, North America through, through Castle Garden. That was before Ellis Island. That's where you went. And that building still stands there today. But they would have, uh, you hear about, um, is it Ellis Island? Yeah, it's Ellis Island. But Castle Garden was the original immigration station back in the early 1800s. My family came over to New York in the very early part of the 1800s. Really neat book. Well, that's a cool piece. Close that up and keep digging. This is kind of cool. Um, I believe this is, uh, I'm not 100% sure. I believe it's a humidor, silver humidor. Because it's got the, uh, the vent in the top and I believe that's for keeping your tobacco fresh. I could be way wrong on that, but it's a pretty cool piece. It was gifted in 1956, you can barely make it out there, to the 64th Fighting Interceptor Squadron. And there's a scorpion on it, which was their logo, a scorpion in an airplane. Oh, that would have been, you know, just after Korean, kind of Cold War era military item, probably a gift to, to um, Major Burry on there, Gerald Burry. It's a neat little piece. Nice little piece of uh, aviation and military history. And what do we have here? 100 reproductions of the world's great paintings. Another lithograph book. There we go. So it looks like these are all color plates of famous works of art. So it's not actually bound as a book. They're just all individual plates. It is nice that it has a special little case for them, though. That's got to be a fairly old set, I would think. I'll put that over with the uh, Courier and I've set. Look at that up. Look at that later. And what do we have here? I'll try and grab some of the, this ephemera, this paperwork out to dig through. It's like some of this stuff came from the estate of a uh, U.S. Air Force pilot, and so we ended up with some things like. Uh, some of his official military training pictures. That's him on the left. He would uh, later help out with the um, Mercury 7 space program, actually, as a uh, flight instructor to check out the astronauts on planes. So has kind of a neat history. You know, the guys were flying these fighter jets. You know, those are the, this is like your top gun crew of the 50s and 60s right here. And a lot of times these pictures will say, like, um, U.S. Defense Department on it or things like that. So it's kind of fun going through them and seeing that history there. Great jacket too. August 1956. That was super cool. Just neat to kind of go through all this and, and see this history and, you know, all these letters from the War Department and stuff. Unfortunately, the, the gentleman passed some time ago now, but it was a highly decorated uh, major in the U.S. Air Force who did uh, boxing and wrestling and all kinds of stuff. So uh, at some point along the line, the uh, family decides that you don't uh, need all these extra items in the house. You too can be a fake piano player. It's funny, I know this is older than YouTube, but it's like implying that you too, the band, <laughs> can be a fake piano player. You too can be a fake piano player. Interesting. I guess it's a piano instruction book. It's an odd way of naming your book. Maybe it's good. It looks like somebody went to go see Jesus Christ Superstar when it came out. October 1970, a rock opera. That's kind of neat. That's original playbill from Jesus Christ Superstar. There's a lot of people who appreciate or like that uh, musical, so that's pretty nifty. 1950, Metham versus Baldwin. Baldwin, New York. Gotcha. Early football brochure. Probably would have given out of the games. There's a couple of them. And, oh, high school. Well, they were printing nice stuff like this for the high schools. 
I don't think we even got stuff like that for, uh, <laughs> you know, almost for the CFL. I don't think they even give out stuff that nice at the at the gate anymore. Yeah, that's pretty nifty. And we've got a whole schwack of pipes. That one's been well used. Somebody just nibbled away at the end there and you'd have to almost replace it, a corn cob pipe. But uh, people do actually buy used pipes. Maybe you'd be surprised to hear that because it's somebody else's mouth has been on there, but people will clean these up, polish them, make them look nice, and they will use them. Uh, there are smike, uh, pipe smoking enthusiasts out there. And so certain brands of pipes, that one says it's a long champ from France leather wrapped that was kind of a fancier one and then there's all these nicely carved wooden pipes there are pipe collectors so when i get pipes like this in people do buy them they don't usually sell for a heck of a whole lot unless they're a nice meerschaum pipe or something but oh that must be his school letters from mefham high school let's say since i've got quite a few uh brochures from there i'm gonna guess that that's where that's from Let's see, construction of the Hoover Dam. Little brochure, that's kind of cool. And we've got some books. Let's bring these out. Now these books are newer, but they're kind of cool. Like the Lincoln Highway, talking about all the cool stops along the way. Just probably a good read and lots of fun photos and pictures. Uh, and then we've got underneath it, history of the land yacht, the Airstream. Now I, must admit that I do like Airstream trailers. I think they're pretty cool. And given the opportunity, I will own another one someday. I'd like to fix another one up. Uh, if it wasn't for buying an Airstream trailer, I wouldn't have ended up with um, Mary Borgstrom's house because I sold my trailer to buy the house, which ended up being full of pottery. And anyway, it kicked off our YouTube channel. So have a, a fondness for Airstream trailers just in general. Um, plus, they look super great when they're all shined up with a fresh interior. So I might keep that one for myself. Box number three, we've got a 18-inch uh, motion-activated John Lennon, the New York years. There's big, giant John Lennon doll from NECA. That's a cool piece. Tambourine, because why not? Who doesn't need a tambourine in their life? That's what I want to know. The Beatles vary together. This was, um, I believe, only issued in Canada. Polydor Records Canada. So this wasn't a release you could get really anywhere else. So that's kind of a good record. When you get things that are issued only in certain countries, it um, adds the collectability. Because if you're a Beatles collector, you might say, oh, that's the one I'm missing. <laughs> that is one of the nice things about being in Canada. We get a lot of weird stuff that other places don't get. Uh, this is interesting. This is a, um, it's a reprint, of course. But it's a uh, reprint of The Last Will and Testament of John Lennon. John Winston Ono Lennon. Oh, he took her last name too. Well, that's very progressive. Winston, I didn't know his middle name was Winston. Who knew? Resident of the County of New York, State of New York. Wow. Let's see. What, else, what was he thinking of? Uh, so basically everything goes to Yoko. Kind of weird to look at somebody else's, uh, you know, will, essentially. It's an insight into their life. It's only a two-page will. I guess you didn't have to really have a, a whole lot of stuff, um, you know. I guess you don't have to have a big Bible book size thing of uh, things that have to go places. Just bing, bang, boom, there you go. Now, the person I got this stuff from was obviously a very big Beatles fan. And so we have here a um, reprint of The Last Will and Testament of John Lennon. John Winston Ono Lennon. He took Yoko's last name in there. That's very progressive. But who knew his middle name was Winston? I guess I don't know my uh, my my John Lennon uh, backstories as well. So it basically just looks like he was planning on leaving um, everything to Yoko. Which if you're married, it's a pretty common thing to do. John Winston Ono Lennon. 1979 dated. Well, that's kind of dark, but yet interesting at the same time. And then we have... Beetle stamps. I think these were fan club stamps. So you could, or I don't know where you got them from actually, but they are little uh, stamps from the 60s of your favorite Beatles. I guess you'd stick them on your binders and books and whatever, but that's a sheet of them that's uh, unused. That's pretty, pretty nifty. And these are from concerts that uh, this person had gone to. So they went to go see Wings. There's a Rolling Stone cover with John Lennon on it. 
uh, let's see, Paul McCartney, early 1980s sort of Paul McCartney tour stuff. So there's a lot of um, these, these tour books and brochures and things you get from the concert are actually a little bit more collectible than your average stuff because um, you had to go to the show to get it. You know, it wasn't something that you really, uh, you couldn't just buy at a bookstore or something. You had to be there. You had to live it. You had to be there, man. Um, and so that's pretty cool that they've got, uh, I think this is an album insert. It looks like it's from inside of a record. The Jim Keltner fan club. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to go through all this because there is quite a variety of stuff. Let me... Linda McCartney, the 60s, Portrait of an Era. That was from, uh, about, yeah, about 20 years ago or so where they did all of her photos. They brought them to the museum for exhibitions. What is this? It's a hardcover book in here. The Beatles Illustrated Lyrics. It actually looks like it's got some age to it. Let's see what the print date on this book is. Five dollars new. You know it's gonna be an old book when it was only five bucks. The Beatles illustrated the lyrics too. I'll have to look this one up and see. Oh, let's see. Um, nineteen seventy-one. Okay, yeah, that's going back a, a little ways. Well, that's pretty psychedelic. Uh, that's I get. I actually suspect this would be a good book. I'm going to uh, look up the value and place it on an overlay here on the screen so you can kind of see what I've discovered in terms of value. But um, that's a pretty cool piece for a, a Beatles fan. And it's of the era when they were still, you know, they were still doing their... Well, 71, that's, you know, a little after the fact. But um, they were all alive. They were all, you know, producing albums and doing... They were still very much at their peak around that time. So that's a pretty cool thing. Really neat book. At the very bottom of that box, I also uncovered some newspapers from the day that John Lennon was shot, December 9th, 1980. Tragic, tragic death, tragic event. And uh, there's a lot of, um, you know, historical, there was a lot of coverage all over, you know. We have both newspapers, the way they, they covered it. Um, aside from, of course, the, the newspapers, which are cool, there's a lot of uh, press releases this person worked for a radio station as well, so they ended up getting these press release kits. Like, that's from Wings Japan Tour 1980. That's their promotional booklet with its holder. There's the uh, Bee Gees. Record World Presents 20th Anniversary Salute. There's Rolling Stones Steel Wheels Tour. David Bowie 1983 Tour. It's in good shape still, too. John Lennon, One Day at a Time, a biography of his that was done around 1971 or so. I think that, 71 or 76 around then anyway, so. Cool book. The Mystery of Billy Shears and the Beatles. Call it coincidence, 1989. Hmm. Flaming Pie. This is a uh, another press kit. This is for Paul McCartney. Press release from the Flaming Pie Press Office, a new album from Paul McCartney. So kind of cool to come across all this stuff in the bottom of a box, all these old tour brochures and press kits and newspapers. Actually, that's the full, I think this is, this is the uh, full press kit for the world tour. That's not just something you got at the show. It's got all the, all the stuff inside of it, you know, stills that they could use for promoting it. Tour dates, merchandise stuff. Yeah, all dated originally to 1994. Neato. And I guess it wouldn't be complete buying a whole bunch of stuff from a former disc jockey without getting the old on-air sign. <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool, actually. And uh, really decent shape, too. It's a light box. It says on-air. Would have hung, uh, like, outside of the um, recording studio while they're going on-air and doing the show well, that's a pretty cool find as well i had one of these before i sold it to a friend of mine who still has it in inserted in his wall in his uh sort of man cave south in his basement um has a guitar collection and he put that there they're really neat decor piece I'm pleased to find another one now maybe you think i'm crazy that i bought some blankets who would buy blankets you say people buy blankets hudson bay blankets sell 
hundreds of dollars sometimes. And when you find something that's a little bit more unique, like that, an original Air Force wool blanket, or we've got, if you don't like that one, we've got US Navy. All military blankets, all three of them, that came from the estate of a um, former major in the US Air Force and all in really decent shape. I'm sure they were just using them as blankets around the house, but I saw the saw the markings on them. I thought, well, that's cool. I gotta bring that back to the shop. Somebody else is gonna think that's neat too. If you're decorating, if you um, have a military theme going on in your house and you wanna have kind of a statement piece that is also a piece of history, these are sort of things that you just don't find in too many places. When I saw this item sitting on their floor, I didn't even need to open it to know what it was. Could you tell from looking at it? Typewriter, you might say, but it's not. It's not, it's not a little suitcase, it's not a typewriter. What gave it away to me is that hole right there. This is in fact a wind-up record player. Ba -bum. Oh, look, there's records in it too. Portable piece, taken on a picnic. Um, you have your, let's see, the needles of all, this, this always happens, there's needles forever lying around inside of these things that just gum up the work. So I have to clean it up. I'm sure they're all over the place in there. Your handle goes in here, threads in. I don't even know if this works. We're gonna try. See if I can give it a bit of a crank. Oh, hang on. There should be a break right there. That's how you start and stop it. It's basically just as a little lever that pushes against the platter so it can't move. Get your crank going just a little bit, and you should release it, and off you go. So that's probably a little too fast. So you can adjust the speed there. It's gonna sound like Elvin and the Chipmunks if you play it that fast. Hang on, let's put a put a record on here. What do we got? Fats Domino, My Blue Heaven. We got some actual music here. Whether this plays or not, that's a whole other story. Yeah, I'm going to take that off. That needle sounds like it needs to be replaced. But the good news is the platter is turning and working, and that's a very expensive fix if it doesn't. Repairing the uh, resonator or the needle, that's not so hard to do. It's going to end up just being a display piece for somebody anyway. And plus it came with, let's see, Mitch Miller. Eh. Maybe you guys like Mitch Miller out there. I don't know. I'm more excited about the Fats Domino so far. Or the Crew Cuts Earth Angel. There's a classic. So a few records with it, that piece will sell for probably, you know, like a hundred and a quarter or something like that, even as it is. And yes, I know it kind of looks rough, but it does work. And the suitcase uh, gramophones are actually quite a bit more collectible than the upright gramophones, the big cabinet pieces that you see around, because these can go on a shelf and they look cool and they don't take up a giant piece of real estate in your house. So I'll put that all back together just the way it was and uh, we'll get that out. Oh, see this little case, that's where your needles are supposed to go, right in there. So they all fell out, all these needles that are all lying around here fell out of that. So we'll have to get that fixed up. But neat little set, and we're almost at the end of it here. I, this is just like a Halloween type of skull, but the guy had airbrushed it and painted it like a uh, Ouija board. <laughs> I just thought it was kind of creative. So not probably, you know, it's worth something to somebody, but it, I just thought it was an interesting looking thing. Um, there is another box marked pipes. Actually, hang on, I'm gonna come back to that in a sec. I wanna show you, there is another duck here. Somebody started to carve this and they did a pretty decent job. I think I'm actually gonna take this one home and try and finish it myself. I've kind of always wanted to do uh, some kind of decorations on a, wooden duck like this and we've got a great little platform for that so maybe i'll take that home and make some kind of art out of it but we've got a nice old advertising cardboard sign which really didn't last this cardboard stuff was often thrown out and that's a good early piece the first cord tire made in america was a goodrich goodrich still makes the first cord tire in america well that feels like they just repeated themselves <laughs> well i guess it got the point across but judging by that tire this is a 1920s advertisement and he's got what's left of his bowler hat where some monsters come along and take a big bite out of the top. Cookie monster, perhaps. Disappointingly found out it wasn't a cookie. 
but early ads are very difficult to find. It's not gonna be worth a whole lot because of the condition issues, but it is kind of a cool piece. And if you're into decorating your garage up with period correct stuff from that time, it is still kind of a cool thing. So that's a neat piece, but let's dig inside the pipe box and see what's in here. I'm gonna guess pipes. Yep, it's a bunch of pipes. So all in all, a pretty good haul today. Um, I would say that, uh, boy, the, the coolest stuff, I, I really like all the, the paraphernalia, the ephemera, the books, the manuals, all the, the rock concert stuff. That was neat. Uh, we got all those pictures. It's from the Air Force pilot. All, just all kinds of good, fun stuff that we'll find a home for. Shame about the violin, but hey, that's, that's the way it goes. If I had a smaller violin, I'd be playing it right now. <laughs> because they turned it into a lamp, but uh, somebody's going to think it's neat anyway. It's kind of kitschy and kind of cool. Though you never know what's lurking in somebody's basement. Um, it was a fun day. Got to pull a lot of cool stuff out from uh, the depths of people's houses and uh, bring it back to the shop. So today it's going to get priced, going to get put out, and we've got more inventory for the store. And just in time for Christmas too, because we're in getting into the throes of December here right away, and it's just the perfect time to have a, a load of cool inventory come in. But thanks very much for watching today's episode, guys. Um, we hope to see you back here again soon. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Have a wonderful day, guys. We'll see you all soon, and bye for now. Why, hello. It's me. <laughs> Do you know what that means? I got an order, taken over the YouTube, but I wanted to make sure that I showed you guys before I obviously I'm getting ready. It's like eight o'clock at, at night, but I thought it was a lot later because it's dark out there. <laughs> I'll show you what came so that uh, you don't just see it after the fact. Hello, fresh came. So I, I knew they were going to be sending us a box in December, but I didn't know when, and I'm glad I looked outside. But I wanted to show you, I've already opened this because I wanted to see what meals there were in there, and then I thought, wait, quick, grab the camera. Hold on, I, I put the menus on the top. Of course I did. All right, so this week we have one pot, Southwest Beach, and I don't know how to say that, Cavatappi. That looks pretty delicious. And we have, Chicken lettuce, tomato, sammies, mm, mm, mm. and sausage risotto style couscous. Yum. Okay, so what happens is once you open it, everything is still cold in here. Everything comes in the bag. So this is for the couscous. Oh my goodness. It is heavy. That, I don't know. This is a heavy box this time. I don't know if they sent me some bricks in there, but oh my goodness. They're all heavy. Okay. Then I've got a whole head of garlic. That's actually a big head of garlic this time. Oh yeah, this is still, these are rock solid. These, this has been out today. And honestly, these are completely uh, solid still. So here's the chicken and this must be, yeah, hamburger. And I'm guessing this is a sausage then. So I'm gonna go put these in the freezer and I'm gonna cook with it tomorrow, but I didn't want you guys to miss how it comes. This was, uh, this actually was perfect timing because I only did a very small grocery shop today. <laughs> so now I don't have to go to the grocery store. Thank you, HelloFresh. I have no clue which one I'm gonna make. <sighs> All the problems, three meals ready to go, poor me. <laughs> so what I like to do is I go through the ingredients and I decide which one is most likely to need to be eaten first. Just like when you go grocery shopping, you wanna make sure that there's certain items of produce that you need to eat before others. So that's generally how I pick what I'm gonna eat, but even when I've forgotten it, I mean, we eat it within the same week, uh, it's been fine. So, cross my fingers. I will see you all tomorrow wearing a different outfit. <laughs> Hello everyone, it is another day. It's the next day, in fact, and I'm hungry. So we chose the chicken sammies. I'll show you what it looks like. And then I'm gonna get to cooking it. It looks delicious and I'm hungry. What I like about the recipe cards that they give you, they tell you exactly what you're looking for for this recipe. And then it gives you the instructions of exactly how to make it. And then of course, 
um, for your proportions. If you have a two person or four person, I'm looking forward to this. All right, so this is everything that came in this bag. There were some buns, the baby spinach, some sweet potatoes. Do they call it sweet potatoes? Yep. Some tomatoes, some mayonnaise, and some lemon pepper seasoning. I think that's is that what they call it. Yep, yeah, lemon pepper seasoning. Uh, the only thing I'm missing from here is the chicken. First step, cut the sweet potatoes into half inch wedges. Add some oil and half of the lemon pepper seasoning. Uh, oh wait, sorry. Peel the mince or grate garlic, then add the sweet potatoes. Season with salt, toss to coat, roast in the middle. Flip halfway, 24 minutes. The holidays can be hectic, but HelloFresh keeps things simple with recipes and ingredients that cut out grocery shopping and limit meal prep time so you can spend more of the festive season with friends and family. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from each and every week, including vegetarian, calorie smart, and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety. In fact, HelloFresh offers so many recipes to choose from each week, it really helps you break out of your recipe rut, especially around the holiday season. Not only does HelloFresh offer quick and easy 20 minute meals with easy cleanup, the packaging that HelloFresh uses to ship your food in is made from already recycled content. So it's great for you, it's faster to your table, and it's better for the environment. Forgot to preheat the oven to 450. Uh, so while I'm waiting for the stove to put the potatoes in, I'm going to cut up the tomatoes and pat the chicken dry, and I'm going to slice it in half horizontally. So we're making thinner chicken cutlets. So, yep, this should go, this will go smooth. All right, I'm sure most of you have tried that before, but when you're cutting the chicken, make sure to keep your hand flat on top because you like your fingers. <laughs> and make sure that your knife is doing the work for you. I had, I think, on one chicken piece that kind of shot through the end. That shouldn't happen. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want that. Make sure that it's slow and let the knife work for you. So now I have all these kind of thinner chicken pieces. I need to sprinkle it with the remaining lemon pepper and then salt it and then we're ready to cook. While I wait for the chicken, Cooking in the background, I'm going to make the aioli. They don't call it an aioli, but it's garlic and mayonnaise. So what I'm gonna do is add to the mayonnaise, I think just one clove of garlic. Oh, it says a quarter teaspoon. I'm gonna add a whole clove. So I'm gonna get on that so that I can start sitting with the garlic. It'll be extra delicious. So this recipe sounded super simple. I thought, okay, chicken, chicken on buns. Not only is it super easy, but it smells amazing. Those sweet potato fries are wedges in the oven right now. Literally, my mouth is watering. I just am waiting for the last two chicken, I don't know what you call them, when they're cut in half. We're gonna call them cutlets. Once those are done, I just have to toast the buns, take the potatoes out of the oven, and we're gonna start assembling and eating the best part. Oh, you guys, it smells so good. So good in here. And how is it? It's really good. What's your favorite part? Oh. I'm trying to film. Oh. <laughs> What's your favorite part, Jason? All of it. Did you have the aioli? Yeah. What do you think, Stephen? It's really good. I'm probably going to steal another one. Visit HelloFresh.com and enter in code CuriosityIncorporated14 to get up to 14 free meals and three free gifts.